Dear guests, welcome to the Edelstam Foundation ceremony. My name is Klaus Johan Larsson and I will be your host throughout this ceremony. Due to the fact that we all suffer from the pandemic, uh, we are all this year uh, having the ceremony held at the uh, Royal Park Hotel in Stockholm. We are here to award the Edelstam Prize, a prize established to honor individuals who have made outstanding contributions and showed exceptional courage within the defense of human rights. The Edelstam Prize is this year awarded for the fifth time. The Foundation is proud to announce Mrs. Osvalinda Marcelino Alvarez, sorry, Alves, Alves Pereira. The name is very important, it should be right. I'll be back to that many times throughout the ceremony. This is a very worthy recipient. The prize is named after and awarded in the memory of the Swedish diplomat and ambassador Harald Edelstam. He made his mark as a diplomat by his professional competence, his bravery and his civic courage. He was an early proponent and a symbol of what is known today as the responsibility to protect. And his memorable acts saved more than a thousand lives. As a young diplomat, Harald Edelstam worked in Nazi-occupied Norway. He functioned as a link between the Germans and the Norwegian resistance movement called Jemmefronten, which came to call him the Black Pimpernel. He smuggled Jews to Sweden and protected them in his private home. Throughout his life, Harald Edelstam continued to commit courageous acts, not the least as the Swedish ambassador to Chile during the time of Pinochet's rule. He opened the doors to the Swedish embassy for refugees. He negotiated with the junta. He alarmed media and the international community of the atrocities happening in Chile. He managed to save more than 1,500 human beings during and in the following months after the coup. Not only Chileans, but also Uruguayans and Brazilians too. The last prize was awarded in 2018 to Mrs. Li Wenchu from China, and a lot has happened since. Her husband, the human rights watcher, sorry, he, the human rights lawyer, Mr. Wang Guangzhong, was held in prison in Comunicado. He was released after five years and intensive advocacy campaigns. He will, we will now see a short sequence of when Li Wenchu and her son reunites with her husband after five years apart. So the Edelstam Foundation sees that the prize is important to support and encourage people around the world who stand up against violence and persecutions. Also, people who dare to work for justice, who have the courage to make the perpetrators accountable for their violations. Please let me now introduce one of the founders of the Edelstam Foundation who holds the chair and also is the granddaughter of Harald Edelstam, Miss Caroline Edelstam. Good, Good evening. E Good evening. There you are, Caroline. Welcome. Can you please tell us uh, what is the most important criteria for selecting a successful candidate? Thank you. The prize goes to someone who has acted in Harald Edelstam's spirit in a country where crimes against uh, human rights have been committed by a government or other strong power. The candidate has presumably in a very complex situation taking a decisive role in helping threaten people or directly saving lives. And of course, their actions have demonstrated a great civic courage within the defense of human rights. And the candidate has been very creative and unconventional uh, and had, to, um, had the courage to speak with people in authority. 
So could you please tell us a bit about this year's laureate, Miss Osvalinda Alves Pereira? Yes. So imagine that you are an ordinary farmer living a rather traditional life in the Amazonas rainforest in the Aria region in Para. You cultivate in your garden, you sell your fruits and vegetables together with your husband. You create artworks to sell on the local market. Imagine how large farmers in the area start logging the forest around you. How the wonderful forest you care so deeply about, the forest with all its animals and its lush beauty. You know it is illegal, but how can you defend the rainforest? Our laureate, Ms. Osvalinda Alves Peira, started a women's association in the land reform area where she lives to develop sustainable organic agriculture and reforest, uh, reforest the logged areas, planting trees where logging had occurred. Criminal networks in the Amazon are formed by illegal loggers. The networks deploy armed men to protect their illegal activities, to intimidate the forest defenders, to threaten them, and to kill those who obstruct them. Imagine waking up to this fear every morning. Imagine waking up on a beautiful morning the dogs are barking, the sun is shining, and you come out in your garden to find two simulated graves. Someone has entered your backyard during the night and really took the careful effort of digging two graves, one for you and one for your husband. Carefully, someone has piled up two mounds of soil and adorned them with crosses in wood. Imagine the horror of finding this in your backyard. Imagine this triggering point where you realize you have to flee. You have to flee for your life. You pack your bags and your necessities and you lock the door. You are gone. You are far away from the house in a secondary solution. You are protected by the federal program to protect human rights defenders, journalists, and environmental defenders. Imagine that you've been away from your home for more than uh, 18 months. You've been trying to keep contact with the Women's Association to find news, and you have to hide. But what is happening at home? You're fearing for your life every second. Our laureate, Osvalinda Alves Pereira, lives with this fear every day. Is the protection strong enough? After months and months, Osvalinda Alves Pereira and her husband Daniel decided to go back home. The federal program, program can support if they build an additional shelter in their house. But this costs money and already it's difficult to find, find means to survive as they cannot work as usual. Imagine being back for three months and already you had to report several incidents. The government cannot secure their safety. According to the organization Pastoral Land Commission, there have been more than 230 cases of fatal attacks with more than 300 victims in the context of conflicts over the use of land and resources in the Amazon. In the 28 murders of forest defenders, at least 19 of them could have, uh, have been uh, preceded by threats. Imagine that all those cases have been registered in the Amazon region the past decade, but only nine of those cases have gone to trial. Imagine that in Para, the, st the state with the highest number of killings, that only four out of 89 cases went to trial between 2009 and 2019. Imagine if your government could not protect you. No investigations and no punishments. 
Imagine that fear. Imagine to wake up every morning being afraid of criminal networks circulating your house with motorbikes, simulating graves, and never know when armed men would show up in your patio. Imagine having this exceptional courage. I would really like to congratulate Ms. Osvalinda Alves Pereira for her outstanding contributions. And I would also like to thank our jury for the great work they've done in selecting this wonderful candidate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Caroline. And of course, we should introduce the jury to you. But before that, please let me also tell you that there will be lots of greetings from other parts of the world to the, this year's laureate in a few moments. But first, let me introduce the international jury. It is chaired by Miss Caroline Edelstam, who we just heard talking here. And other members of the jury are the 2003 Nobel Prize uh, laureate, uh, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, that is, Judge Shirin Ebadi, who's representing Asia. Africa is represented by Dr. Pascual Makumbi, former prime minister of Mozambique. Ambassador Aileen Donahue, Executive Director of Global Digital Policy Incubator of Stanford uh, University's Center for Democracy, Development and the Rule of Law, and former User Ambassador to UN Human Rights Council, represents North America. Professor Philip Alston, UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, represent Oceania. And Latin America is represented by former Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Dr. Luis Moreno Ocampo. And Europe is represented by former Judge Baltasar Garzón, who served on Spain's Central Criminal Court, who is known for having indicted the Chilean dictator, General Augusto Pinochet, for the deaths and torture of thousands of victims from Chile and other countries. Coming back to our laureate, it is true shame Mrs. Osvalinda Alves Pereira can't be with us here today. We will now see a short film about the situation in Pará. Human Rights Watch provided us with the material for the film. So please let me introduce to you Mr. Cesar Munoz. Here in Brazil, people who try to stop illegal logging are getting threatened attacked and even killed. The current administration has sabotaged environmental law enforcement and the results are clear. There has been a dramatic increase in deforestation in 2019 and no progress in ending the impunity for attacks against environmental defenders. Jamal, que nós estamos abrindo porque nós tem informação que tem invasão para cá. Tá, pô, cara, nós chegamos não, isso tem que parar, né? Bora se unir, se juntar e isso tem que acabar, né? Aí, por conta disso, né, as ameaças aumentaram, né, as autoridades aí, que nós temos, as autoridades, se não foi esperar por eles, aqui já não tinha mais nada. Dói porque você vê os caminhões passando com as madeiras, madeira centenária, que nunca mais vai retornar. Eles forçam a pessoa a vender, a, a, os agricultores a vender as terras deles, que ameaçaram eu e meu esposo de morte, né, que falaram ou eu aceitava o dinheiro ou eu morria. Eu falei, então pode matar. A partir desse momento, eu falei assim, não, agora eu vou denunciar. Eles podem chegar a ameaçar, matar e estar tá impune, que nem acontece direto. Isso, enfim, a ausência de Estado, ela torna muito confortável uma prática criminosa, porque ela não é impedida, ela não é investigada e ela não é punida. Thank 
크잖아. 음. 음. Now, with us in the studio, we have the great Brazilian artist, activist and anthropologist, researching about democracy, environment and human rights in Latin America, who through her music puts focus on social problems in Brazil. Please let me introduce to you Miss Partira Fortes. Parte de mim é grito. Parte medo, parte de mim é lúcida, outra parte erro, parte de mim é intensa, outra parte desatino, parte de mim é acerto, outra parte sussurro. Parte de mim é coragem, outra parte é choro. Parte de mim é risada, outra parte consolo. Parte de mim é lamento, outra parte impulso. Parte de mim é alimento. Sou ele, sou ela, 
nosso elo Unido é o um corpo inteiro Resgatando o tempero Daquilo que nego Parte de mim vazio, parte de mim que clama, parte de mim foi um rio, o que sobrou é lama. Thank you, Adelson Foundation, for the invitation to represent Brazilian music in this amazing award and to pay this tribute to Osvalinda Pereira for her wonderful and important work. And for all of you who, like her, put your life at risk to protect our Mother Earth. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Parabéns, Osvalinda Pereira. A luta continua, companheira. Um beijo. Thank you very, very much. Um, <clears throat> it's so sad we can't have any audience that we can give a big hand of applause. But of course, in our hearts, we say thank you to Partida Fortes for that wonderful music. And uh, now we also have another greeting coming up. Uh, we are going to meet with the Swedish Prime Minister, Mr. Stefan Löfven, who also is the former board member of the Edelstam Foundation. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you today to celebrate the deeds of Harald Edelstam. It is a great honor. I would also like to congratulate this year's prize winner, Osvalinda Marcelino Alves Pereira. I am deeply impressed by your struggle to defend the Amazon rainforests, despite the threats you have faced. For me, Harald Edelstam's name is strongly associated with two things, civil courage and bravery. Edelstam was a great man a hero. He practiced what he preached and managed to save thousands of lives. He put the lives of others first, risking his own health and safety. To this day, people around the world talk of his deeds with deep respect and warmth. Here in Sweden, there are thousands of people with roots in Chile who were saved or know someone who was saved from Pinochet's military dictatorship, thanks to Edelstam. This moves me and makes me proud. Edelstam contributed to the strong people-to-people -people bonds that exist between Sweden and Chile today. Let us also remember Edelstam's great deeds to save Jews and Norwegian resistance fighters during the German occupation of Norway deeds that also deserve our gratitude and respect. His strong and genuine commitment to the protection of human rights inspires us and shows us the way, not least in these difficult times when democratic principles and the defense of human rights are loudly and openly called into question. It is our shared responsibility to stand up for democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. This is what Harald Edelstam would have done. There is no doubt about that. We owe Harald Edelstam a great debt of gratitude. We owe it to him to act in his spirit of civil courage and bravery. I would like to thank Osvalinda Marcelino Alves Pereira and all others working in his spirit today. Thank you for allowing me to be with you on this important day. Thank you very much, Prime Minister Stefan Löfven. We're now going back to Brazil for a short while. He's gonna get a greeting from one of the greatest singers in Brazil, Pará, uh, from Pará, Mrs. Fafá de Belém. Eu quero trazer aqui meus cumprimentos, meu abraço, muito apertado, essa grande Osvalinda. Uma mulher guerreira que preserva a nossa cultura, preserva a nossa região, uma grande lutadora. 
cada vez que uma mulher paraense do seu patamar recebe um prêmio dessa magnitude, todas nós somos premiadas. Parabéns, Osvalinda. Parabéns. A sua luta é a nossa luta. From Pará, Miss Fafá de Belém. Now we welcome on stage Miss Ana Carina Devesa, an environmentalist uh, who has also been working as the former president to Stockholm Junior Water Prize. What is the impact of what is happening in the Amazon rainforest? Is my question to her when she's coming in. She's be, she will be here any minute. But while we wait for her, I can of course tell you that we are also giving in more greetings from, from Brazil. And we also will have a discussion later on, a panel discussion that will be led by uh, Ana Carolina. And uh, well, here she is. Please come up on stage to me so that I can ask you a few questions. Thank you very much for coming in. And also now I will prepare you for um, a little film we're going to show later on because just before we started the broadcast, we got a film from one of the most famous and renowned journalists in Brazil. But we'll show that after we've been talking to each other. Okay. So my question to you is, what is the impact of what is happening in the Amazon rainforest as of today? Okay, well, the Amazon is uh, playing in such important uh, ecosystem services, not only to indigenous peoples and local communities, but to the entire world. And there are many problems. The situation there is very complex, but uh, mainly in the last years, the deforestation trend is increasing. So that's the main problem we have to face. So what is really causing this situation? Uh, well, criminal networks operating a uh, very profitable business in the region. So I'll give you some numbers. Um, just in 2017, in Areia, where Osvalinda lives, 23,000 cubic meters of timber were removed. And this is worth $63 million. So that's what's motivating these networks. Yeah, it's quite a lot. And uh, the area is quite vast as well, as I understand. Yes. Um, you will be back with a panel discussion later on. And uh, we have some forward. really interesting guests taking part of that. But already now, I'd like you to just tell me, because I'm not that well, uh, well known about what's happening in Brazil when it comes to the journalists' work and everything. But I understand that we have a greeting from someone who's very important. Do you know his name? Of course, uh, he's André Trigueiro. He is the most renowned environmental journalist in Brazil. And I'm really happy to have his saying here because I'm a huge fan. Uh, and uh, his video was uh, kindly allowed by TV Globo where he works. Oh, wonderful. So let's have a look at this one and congratulate you to you so who all knows about the Portuguese. We didn't have time to, to translate it yet, but I think that you might be able to help us a Bit. Yes, I'm so trying. please roll the film. O sudoeste do Pará é uma das áreas mais violentas do mundo na disputa por terra, nos conflitos agrários historicamente sangrentos, aonde pessoas armadas, financiadas por quem não respeita a lei e a ordem, expulsam de lugares que julgam ser seus pessoas que com muita honestidade, muita legitimidade procuram sinalizar outro uso para a terra, respeitando a lei de forma sustentável. E esse é o mérito da Osvalinda. Ela é a voz da resistência, da inspiração de lideranças que procuram sensibilizar as autoridades para a urgência de um Brasil melhor e mais justo. Parabéns a Osvalinda. Okay, so he's basically saying that Pará is one of the most violent regions and um, the, the land uh, uh, conflicts over there is very bloody. Um, and he's saying that uh, many people are trying to create a sustainable use of land, but other people that are not respecting the law and the order are financed armed uh, conflicts over there. And he's congratulating Osvalinda for her outstanding work uh, in, in standing up and uh, signalizing to authorities that uh, this is happening there. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
As I told you, Anna will be back later on uh, with the, the discussion, the panel discussion that will well uh, follow on this prize ceremony. This year's laureate, Miss Osvalinda Alves Pereira. Well, she is a strong personality. One has been doing a picture about her work, a documentary film, O Tempo Que Resta. And we will now show you a piece of that in a trailer that has recently been produced. Nós tínhamos assim, a crença que aquela terra era nossa, porque nossos pais, nossos avós viveram lá, nossos bisavós. Então a gente achava que a terra era nossa. Se a gente incentivar outros agricultores a plantar, fazer o mesmo sistema que a gente faz, é, com certeza nós conseguimos resgatar esses colunos, né? E ele sai da mão dos fazendeiros e dos madeireiros e começa a produzir também. Como é que foi aquela história da tua, da tua ameaça de morte? Chegou a época de vir 12, tudo armado aqui em casa, oferecer dinheiro pra gente, pra gente deixar a causa quieta. Eles queriam que a gente ajudasse ele nas, nas extrações de madeira ou na legalização dos, fazen, dos fazendeiros. Quando passa um caminhão lotado de madeira perto de mim, eu sinto muita raiva. Quando passa um caminhão com soja, eu sinto raiva, porque eu sei que a nossa Amazônia está sendo destruída. Para enriquecer meia dúzia de pessoas, e para empobrecer uma nação, e para destruir toda uma floresta, para destruir tantas vidas. Aí você tem que sair correndo aí simplesmente porque você tem que sair. Eu não durmo quase não, viu? Eu sei, seu senhor. Vamos esperar a resposta do procurador e da procuradora agora, agora em fevereiro. Ver o que eles vão fazer com a gente aqui. This was a piece of the film O Tempo Que Resta about our laureate, Miss Osvalinda Alves Pereira. Now we have another very important person who sends a greeting, Mr. Evandro Tejeira, who himself was in Santiago de Chile during the coup in 1973. He is considered to be one of the greatest photojournalists in the history of Brazil. Durante a minha trajetória no Porto de Livro, me encontrei na linha de frente de eventos históricos de repressão, tanto no meu país quanto fora. Acompanhei mudança provocada por revoluções. Por isso, reconheço a importância de homenagear e proteger pessoas que lutam pelos direitos humanos. É uma honra estar presente nessa cerimônia, ainda que de forma virtual, para parabenizar a Osvaldina Alves Pereira, a primeira brasileira a receber o prêmio Edelstan de Direitos Humanos por sua atuação na Floresta Amazônica. Me sinto orgulhoso de saber que estamos do mesmo lado, lutando por um Brasil e um mundo melhor. Obrigado, Osvaldino. Well, there are quite many people that would like to send their greetings to Osvalinda today. And, um, well, the main reason why we're here today is to actually to hand her the award. And, um, Please let me tell you a bit about the, uh, the prize itself, because it consists of three different things. As you can see, a diploma, and there is also a prize sum, and also a piece of art, a wonderful piece of art made by a Danish artist called Mr. Jens Galshoit. The foundation is so grateful to him for his contribution. There's a special story behind this rose. It's called a rose to Yasaman. Last year, on the International Women's Day in Iran, 
this lady, 24 years old, Yasaman Ariani, peacefully handed out roses without wearing the traditional hijab. In return, she received a lengthy prison sentence, 16 years. So, Mr. Gadshot uh, thought that, uh, thought, I'm so sorry, I, I dropped the line there, but I'll be back. Thought that on this year, uh, the International Women's Day, he wanted to give a rose to Yasaman because he thinks that she deserves one. Also, when he did this, he also auctioned this rose to people that were allowed to, to pay. And the money that he got for that, he decided to give that to help people, and especially women, with women's rights throughout the world, and especially in Iran. I really do hope that our laureate, Mrs. Osvalinda Alves Pereira, within a near future, can travel to Stockholm and receive the prize herself directly from, from the uh, uh, prize organization. If not, Caroline Edelstam will travel to Brazil herself to give it to Osvalinda. We are grateful for your exceptional courage in standing up for one's beliefs in the defense of human rights. So, uh, please, this is yours. This is yours, and the award sum is yours. Now, let us see a film from Osvalinda herself. My name is Osvalinda Maria Marcelino Alves Pereira. I live here in the community of Areia, in the municipio of Trairão, for 19 years. Since 2012, we were de morte, eu e my husband, Daniel Alves Pereira, for trabalhar with the Association of Women e trazer benefício para os comunitários e tentar tra trabalhar com agroecologia, assim cuidando da terra e da natureza. Mas devido a tanto problema, né, a, a causa nada, várias ameaças foi acontecido, vários boletins de ocorrência foi feito e nada foi resolvido. É, nós ficou dois anos, um ano e oito meses fora de casa para acolhimento provisório. E resolvi voltar para casa porque não davam é, base de retorno para gente. Nem segurança, nem bem-estar e nada, nem saúde. Nós resolvi voltar para casa. É, chegando em casa, nós estamos tá aqui já há três, três meses, mas já começou as ameaças de novo. Já teve que fazer mais três boletins de ocorrência por, por causa das ameaças. Essa ameaça vem causando pelo vice-prefeito e o vereador da região e o fazendeiro e madeireiro. A gente está na luta, a gente não vai desistir, a gente vai continuar, mesmo com toda a dificuldade, a gente não vai abandonar nossa terra e nem abandonar os amigos que precisam da gente aqui dentro. É, não sei o que dizer, mas só sei dizer uma coisa para vocês. A gente não pode desistir nunca. A luta sempre vai ter E se nós for desistindo, não vai ter mais vitória. É só derrota. Então, a minha luta e a luta do meu esposo é continuar, continuar essa luta, defendendo a agricultura, defendendo a natureza, defendendo a floresta, porque esse é nosso lar. Quando eu, o César falou que eu tinha que ia me inscrever, nem passou na minha cabeça que eu ia ganhar esse prêmio. Quando a embaixadora ligou para mim falando que tinha ganho o prêmio, nossa, eu fiquei, eu fiquei muito feliz, muito feliz mesmo. Não só por ter ganhado o prêmio, mas porque o mundo lá fora estava vendo a nossa luta. Eu fiquei feliz não pelo prêmio, mas porque nós não estamos tá só. Nós não estamos tá sozinhos aqui. Vocês estão vendo a gente, então isso me deu mais segurança para mim, para o meu esposo, para minha família. Deu mais segurança que nós não estamos sozinhos. Esse prêmio vai ajudar muito a gente aqui, com certeza. Vai ser para nossa segurança, para nosso bem-estar, que a gente está sem renda total aqui. A gente não está podendo trabalhar, não tá, porque a gente mexe com poucos de fruta. Não está podendo levar para fora também. Devido às ameaças, a gente não tem escolta policial 24 horas ainda. Então, essa, esse prêmio vem ajudar toda a família. 
E eu só tenho que agradecer a vocês. Agradecer de coração. Agradecer que nós aqui no Brasil, nós não estamos tá só. E aqui é o Pará, aqui no Pará, no estado do Pará, é um lugar que foi esquecido pelo governo. Ninguém olha para a gente. Aqui o que manda é o dinheiro, aqui o que manda é quem, é quem tem poder. E nós agricultores, nós que cuidamos da floresta, nós não temos voz ativa, nós não temos apoio de ninguém. O único apoio que a gente tem é que eles falam que nós temos que morrer. Então eu agradeço desde já esse prêmio e agradeço a todos vocês. E Deus que abençoe a todos. Gente, tudo bom para vocês aí? Boa noite, né? tudo bem? Nós estamos aqui no Brasil, entendeu? E estamos aqui apresentando a nossa é, água extrativismo, né? É, com alguns modelos de incenso florestal mistura, misturado no meio. Né? Aqui nós temos diversas plantas aqui. Né? Isso é muito bom para áreas pequenas, áreas degradadas, áreas para recuperação de áreas que não é produtiva. Que nem a nossa... Aqui está produzindo muito bem, está aqui a produção, né? Vocês veem que tem as, as frutas aqui, né? Aqui tem as frutas também sacadas no saquinho, né? Que a gente faz. E, e esse modelo aqui é um modelo muito importante, que vocês têm que vir aqui para conhecer a nossa propriedade aqui, né, Osvalinda? É, nós trabalhamos com agroestativismo, sem fogo e sem agrotóxico. Esse é o nosso lema. Trabalhar cuidando da natureza para a natureza cuidar de nós. Isso a gente preserva, né? A gente cuida do meio ambiente e a gente é, tem uma facilidade mais enorme de, de produzir com mais qualidade. É, eu queria agradecer a vocês né, pelo prêmio que eu recebi. Esse prêmio vai ser bem-vindo para a nossa família aqui, pra, no sítio. Como a nossa renda está é, bem escassa agora devido à ameaça e devido a gente não ter um trabalho, não estar tá conseguindo vender nossas roupas de fruta, então, nós agradece, eu e Daniel agradece de coração a todos vocês. Muito obrigado. Viu? Mrs. Osvalinda Alves Pereira and her husband. It's a courageous work and acts that have brought the attention to a very important cause. Now we will have the honor to hear what the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, former president to Chile, has to say, Ms. Michelle Bachelet. Good evening to all of you. It is a great pleasure to celebrate with you the human rights work of Osvalinda Marcelino Alves Pereira in Brazil. Ms. Pereira is known for her work with and for women and who struggled to prevent illegal mining, logging, and destructive agricultural and business practices from harming the environment in the Amazon. The actions of human rights defenders like Osvalinda Pereira are deeply beneficial to all of us. In recognizing Ms. Pereira, we also honor all those who take action to stand up for human rights, including our right to a healthy environment. They often do so at great risk. Far too often, they suffer violence and abuse even killings. In this year alone, at least nine human rights activists have been murdered in Brazil, and Ms. Pereira is one of many who have received death threats. Human rights defenders are a testament to human resilience and strength, and to our capacity to recover better by empowering all people to exercise their rights. These women and men need meaningful protection. Impunity fuels the perpetuation of further assaults against defenders, and weakens the cause of human rights. They, and all of us, should be able to count on a free and open space for community associations, local and international NGOs. The shrinking of the civic space in Brazil, as in many other countries, has alarmed my office. We are seeing rollbacks of environmental protection and the erosion of mechanisms to ensure that civil society organizations can fully participate in decision making. Human rights defenders and journalists remain under threat. Consider the Amazon rainforest, which Osvalinda Pereira and so many others risk their lives to protect. The destruction of the Amazon is a vital issue for the millions of people who count upon this ecosystem for their daily survival, as well as to global climate change. Under human rights law, all governments of the Amazon region have an obligation to take action to prevent these harms and to protect environmental human rights defenders. The Escazú Agreement, which will soon come into force, aims to guarantee 
the right of every person to a healthy environment and to protect human rights defenders. I call on Brazil and other signatories to ratify the agreement immediately and all state parties to effectively implement it. I congratulate Ms. Pereira on her award and thank her for her work. I hope this well-deserved recognition of her courage will send a timely and empowering message to human rights defenders across the Amazon and around the world. Thank you. Thank you, High Commissioner Ms. Michelle Bachelet. Now, please let me again introduce the Foundation's President, Ms. Caroline Edelstam. Thank you. The past two years uh, have been eventful. Sadly, I have to address that our board member, the co-founder and vice president of the foundation, Mr. Henrik Jambel, has passed away. He was one of two Swedish citizens arrested in 1973 during the coup d'etat in Chile and a person who was saved by my grandfather at the National Stadium. Throughout his life, he worked for human rights. He has played an integral role in the Foundation's history, and I would like to light a candle to his memory. Another board member I would like to mention is Mr. Paul Russo-Sebagina, whose courageous acts have been told in the movie Hotel Rwanda. He has been kidnapped and arrested by the Rwandan uh, government while traveling. He is being, being held by President Paul Kagame's government on false charges. Russo Sebagina is a regular critic of human rights violations in Rwanda, and the Rwandan government regularly brings false charges against all critics in order to silence them. The Edelstam Foundation respectfully asks the authorities of the Republic of Rwanda to immediately set Paul Russo Sebagina free, but also to respect his right to choose his own lawyers. When I'm still on the line, I would like to thank our laureate for reporting illegal logging in the Amazon rainforest. And despite constant threats and in standing up for her convictions in times when justice is needed. With this resilience to protect and defend our environment, I hope soon to be able to visit you in Brazil. And I would also like to thank all the fantastic people of the Edelstam Foundation who tirelessly help and work for our cause. Thank you. And I would also like to thank our laureate, our partners, and all our friends. And I would also like to thank you all for being here with us today um, and for supporting our work the important work of supporting others. Thank you so much. Well, uh, thank you very much for bringing me back. It might have been that, that Caroline didn't want to say anything about the, uh, the last part of the, the speech, but I need to ask you because I think there are some more important things for you to say. Shouldn't there be uh, something you would like us to be reminded of? Caroline. Yes, thank you. We have to uh, continue the important work of the, uh, defending the human rights. Our laureate, Ms. Osvalinda Alves Pereira, is at great risk, as many other forest defenders. Threats and attacks against forest defenders should be properly investigated. We have to support the persons who dare to do something courageous. They might lose their employer, family, and friends. They need support. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Caroline. And um, uh, please let me again remind you all watching now about the panel discussion that will take place in a few moments after we finish the, uh, the prize ceremony. Because now again we're going to have music. Uh, please let me introduce to you and welcome Elin Taylos, who will pay a tribute from the Sami people in Sápmi, in the north of Sweden. She will joik, which is the traditional way of singing of the Sami, a way of remembering and honoring life. Welcome. So, Osvalinda. Thank you so much for your immense courage and your love in protecting these forests of the Amazon and the human rights. And um, we are with you. So this is a joik. Uh, it is called Ailis Le Etnam. And that means that the earth is sacred as of all of life.
well, my two hands has to represent everyone's hands uh, who's been listening, who's been taking part of this sermon this afternoon. Thank you very much, Elin Taylor, for what you did to us and also to our laureate in, in Brazil. We will in a few minutes start the panel discussion. So please stay with us, but also if you need to make yourself comfortable for a while, we will be away for a short moment. Uh, and then when we're coming back, please welcome our moderator, Miss Anna Carolina Devesa. For now, it's time for me to say thank you. <laughs> 